Hey, 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 we field. Hey, we field. How y'all doing? Welcome back. Welcome back to the field. This is your girl Lottie here at Tears and We Tarot Show. Well, you're show sure enough, never know what you're going to get. Uh, if you new here, welcome. Welcome to the We Field. Yay. Hey, hey, this is a Tarot Show where we marry testimony and Tarot. Uh, we are a child messenger. Have to give the disclaimer. It could challenge your belief system. I'm just saying, uh, I am spiritual, highly spiritual, intuitive channel messenger. Messaging in the spirit. The most high God is infinite intelligence in the breath of life. Just the three, you know. And uh, that's pretty much all there is to say about me. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> we got to let them know that uh, this mouth right here. I ain't profane, but a damn show cuss. So if you don't want to hear that, you might not want to stay. I bring in text and testimony and uh, how the Most High has spoken to the plane across the ages, like everywhere. You know, I look at me, we look at astrology, we look at biology, we look at theology. I mean, all the ease. You know what I mean? We bring it together. If you can rock with that, if you can vibe. If you can hang on in there, subscribe. If you like it at the end and it's something you care about, share it out. You know what I mean? And if you really want to come back and hear the spell, hit the bell. You know, we do it on the daily. We getting a sip. We rose. And I don't know about shining. I might look a little greasy. I don't know if we shining or not. We'll see on the upload how that came about. All right. So let's get a sip and jump into some cards, okay? Mmm doing some tea today y'all this voice my throat all of that need a little bit of extra a little bit of extra nourishing a little bit of extra focused intention and we have not prayed we ain't pray we didn't we just start grabbing cards and doing stuff and everything y'all want to hang on in there with me while we pray we always have to bless the table. Generally, well, we used to be in a space where Father would have us bless every single deck of cards before they went into use. Father says they all need to have their reverence. But of late, Father has been doing a blessing over the whole setting. And I mean, I think that's wonderful. I mean, I don't mind either way whether we bless each deck or bless the table. It's all about what you guys have Uh stamina for you know you can hang on in there with me or not but right now it feel like it's slow i feel like sludge i feel feel like we haven't even got the crisco out the can yet like it's still sitting over there on the counter somewhere like with my brain it's like back in the bed almost <laughs> so let's see if we can get a little prayer we did and we listened to some some praise music this morning and just trying to yes we did father we listened to some praise music while we were making our tea. And then uh, I think we're going to do a little bit more praise music after the session. And really get our mind into the space of starting up a whole. Yeah, I mean, we started yesterday on Sunday. But, you know, it's Monday to start of the work for somebody else week. Unless you're still working for self. But you know how Mondays can go. So let's let's see what the Father wants to tell us in preparation. And to just, yeah, yeah, we need a crystal let's see prepare us for the week father what is it the message that you would have us something that's self edifying onto self yes first and foremost so that I may edify you and then let me be edified in alignment with you so that I'm overflowed and overflowing in such a way that I'm able to edify your wheat, to give them something, serve them something out that would be good for them so that they can take that in, edification, and edify you. Raise ourselves up. Let us join over the purpose of the message so that we can brighten ourselves, edify ourselves, grow deeper and nourishing into self-discovery. Uh, just fullness of self, fullness of appreciation for self. Appreciate the source of ourselves. Appreciate the source of creation itself. You, Holy Father, are eternal Lord of all that which made all things. Thank you so much. Using your intelligence, 
and binds and connects us with your breath of life. Please put me in alignment. Thank you so much. Alignment with you so that heaven come into earth, in earth, on earth to do a work, a work that is done in heaven. Yes, it is. So I pray that you use me. You use me as your willing, surrendered messenger, a vessel for you to use, to speak through, to bring forth the message again for my goodness, for goodness sake, so that I may edify you, edify your weeks, so that they may be edified and edify you for the purpose of unification and unity. Yes, so that we can come together under the principles, the principles. Yes, Father, we wrestle with principalities. Thank you. Help us, help us, help us. We seek, we come seeking to you for guidance, for assistance, for help. Yes, all of our help comes from you. If you be if we be in alignment, please block and seal us. Please keep us protected. Please protect us from anything that is roaming in this plane and this space that will come against the message to cause confusion, chaos, to conflict anything, to disillusion, to distort. Yes, yes, yes. Please make the message clear. Make it plain. Yes. So that it's good and useful. So that it will be received with clear understanding that we may give each other compassion and on to empathy, sympathy. Stand on the pathway of knowledge. Yes, leading us through wisdom as we practice it daily. Yes, every day, every day, every day. We practice for wisdom's sake. And that puts us on a pathway to peace. Yes, pathway to peace. All these things we pray. We pray in your mighty, your mighty, mighty, mighty authority. That who cannot be named. Who sits above all things. Called all of creation. Yes, and we know that we are whole. We are whole and we are complete. We are whole and we are complete. Help us, help us as we journey to discover each of us, each of us, me. As they say, as I discover me. Yes, 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 yes. Are we in alignment, Father? Are there further words that we should pray? Please give me the prayer, Father. Source says, this is past. Past. Your past walk, your past journey, up until now, has prepared you for today, now, please discern. I prepared you for discovery. Yes. Question all. Question all. So your past walk, your past experiences has prepared, prepared you for self-discovery now. Seek within asking the questions to reveal so that it may be revealed onto you the why I hear, the why. Yes. Yes. Are we in alignment, Father? Can you seal us with your ashes? Get it, y'all. Yes. Thank you so much for sitting with me and being with me as we pray. Thank you so much. Father has blessed the whole table with the breath of life. Yes. Thank you so much. And we see your empowering question. Yes. Do you want to talk about this one? No. But the energy of that question is where am I going? This is another energy. Who am I beneath all of my roles? And that right there lends to self-discovery. Father says yes, it does. Um, because everything that you've gone through in your life, anything in here, 
this one. This. 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 Yes. This. This. Okay. Who am I? Who, what, or who I am beneath all of my roles? And what was I intended to do in this life? Ah, you come on, Father. Come on, Father. When you're talking about self-discovery, going through uh, them past walking, just kind of visualizing where you've been. You don't have to live in it emotionally. That is a thing. To disconnect yourself from the emotion of what has happened. Because emotions, your body, your vessel doesn't know uh, time. It doesn't. Ooh, come on, Daddy. Come on, where my pen at? Because I need to write some of this stuff down before I get squirrel. Y'all going to have to bear with me while I find my ink pen. I need that ink pen. I do. Because I got two thoughts in my head, and I need to write them down. Where's my pack of pens? It's right here. Okay. I got a whole pack right here, y'all. They so pretty. So we talked about, we said time, and we said feeling emotion in the body. Self-discovery. Let's write that down, because I have a tendency to forget. You need to my purple pen. Royalty. It's pretty. Okay. Let's see. What was I intended to do in this life? What? Let's write that down. Self-discovery, Father says. Reviewing, you know, the past. And I'm going to call it a real. Mm -hmm. A past real. Only for observation. Yeah, let's write that down. And then we're going to put in, when you review it, detach the emotion. Yes. So we're going to put detach emotion. If y'all got a pen, go ahead on and write this stuff down. Write it down. Detach the emotions. And here's why. Your body does not understand time. Why? Because you were made by the infinite intelligence of the all. And the infinite intelligence of the all is considers everything is now. In creation, creation is whole, and time truly does not exist. No, we quantify time in terms of the passage of uh, cycles and aging, right? The vessel ages. We do. I mean, because it ain't like time is passing, but we are getting older. Our vessel ages, you know? And so to to see life pass, to see life uh, develop, we quantify that as time, right? Uh, and that's the way it's revealed on to me. But your body doesn't understand that. Your body knows that creation, all of creation is whole, and it understands that all of creation is now. And what you are experiencing in this now is going to be different from now to now. Yeah, I know that sounded weird. I'm going to take a sip while you let that sit in the chakra for a second. Yeah. So... When we talk about self-discovery and looking at your past track up until into this space, how you got to this now, growing through your ages, your evolution, your adaptation, your experiences, all those things, yeah, is really for self-discovery so that you can discover yourself. We come in, our light is whole, it is mature. You know, that's how babies come up in here and we be like, they got an old soul. They they light knows. Oh, this baby done been here before. They have. We say it all the time, but we get older and we kind of discount the fact that we've been here before. It's true. Like the obviousness, the in-your-face obviousness that we experience on a day-to-day, -day, and we disregard it like it's not meaningful, like it's not significant, but it is. It is really like the mysteries of life explained in the simplicity of its, you know, just be. Like in the simplest terms, that baby been here before. And it's true, because that baby been here before. And that baby has come back. Yeah. Yeah. They, they done bust up back up in this thing, probably to redo some stuff or just to learn again. A lot of us choose to come back. Not only do we choose to learn, we choose to experience, to experience creation itself. So if you are a piece, a thought of the Most High God, like the Creator itself, experiencing creation is how you experience you. It's, you know... 
when we are in a state of oneness, there is no names. There is no individualism. We are whole. We are complete. And we go into a state of wholeness. And it's very difficult to differentiate or individualize self and experience your individual self in a state of wholeness engulfed in everything. Like in the one. Albeit everything is still one. But in this manifestation, I am able to experience a level of individual individuality. That which I can discern as me, a piece, a, a pixel of the Most High. And it is my job to be all of me. I mean like every bit of it because there will never be another me. And if I don't fully experience self, then the Source doesn't experience me itself through me. The source is experiencing itself through you. The Most High God lives in you. That's what they say, right? The Father lives and breathes. It lives and breathes through you, through each of us. Every single thing does the Father live in. That is what we call omnipresence. Because the Father made every piece of us, a piece of us, you know, every one of us, so the Father is in every one of us. Its intelligence is written on all of us. It made us by its intelligence. It moves it through us and connects us with the breath of life, the force of life. Everything has the breath. Everything has the force. Whether or not you think it does or not, it does. Because we're all made out of the same thing. You break us down to the molecular structure, the, the, the elements of this thing. You're talking about periodic table. That's you. That's you. And it's creation. And your body knows that. So emotions are a guidance system. It tells you when something's off, something's wrong, what you're feeling, what you're experiencing. It helps you understand that. It is the sixth wonder. Yeah. The five senses you know, the five wonders as I call them. Wonder how I can see, how I can smell, how I can taste, how I can hear, how I have sensation on my skin. And how do all of those sensations, those senses, get brought into my vessel and discerned in my mind? Because we make all of this up in our mind. Yeah, so as a man thinketh, so shall he be. So if you are thinking on your past track, thank your father so good for bringing it back. You're thinking on that past track and how you got to this space right here. What or who I am beneath all my roles, really looking at that self-discovery. Oh yeah, you could feel a certain kind of way about that. But to detach from the emotion is critical. Because your body doesn't understand time. The Most High God, the infinite intelligence, and the breath of life are all now. It's always now. What time is it? It's now. What day is it? Now. It's all now. So if you are emotionally connected still to what has happened to you in the past, it's causing you a feeling of grief, sadness, uh, even joy, happiness, anything, any emotion, just you, you have to detach from it. Because it's no longer. I mean, I guess that's kind of an odd thing, Father. How do we think about that? Can you help re reveal that on to me about how to think about that? Because it is a sense of detachment, just letting it go and not having... Uh, any connectedness to the outcome. It just is. You made a decision, it turned out a certain kind of way, and that's that. You learned. You learned something. It gave you another, another piece to discover, an opportunity to discover you, to learn you. The reason why you came back up in this piece, for learning, or for just the experience. I just experienced it. That's it. It's just for the sake of, why did you go to that new restaurant and pick out something on the menu? Because you wanted to try it. Why did you best back up in this manifestation? Because you wanted to experience it. You wanted to try it. Sometimes it's just that simple. And sometimes the simplicity of it, of life itself, is it makes you like, what? Like, that's it? Yeah, that's it. Just so that you can learn. Just so that you can grow. 
And if you learn something from everything in that past, you go into self and discover what it is that you learned. That's the point. Release the emotion. Don't have any shame. Don't let go of the shame. Let go of the fear. Let go of the anger and, and the bitterness and the resentment. Yes, the resentment. Resentment for self for choosing such a thing. Resentment for others who you feel like tricked you into choosing a certain thing. Resentment for just a waste of what you consider to be time or, or ages or I mean whatever. That whole cycle is going to not be and I have a feeling about that. Release the feeling. You see it, you learned. Now it's time to move on. Learn your darn you. Go on. Release the emotion. Because the emotion tells your body that it's still happening now. Because your emotions is a guidance system. It's a warning to let you know something's going on. So if you're feeling like something that happened 20 years ago and you're still reliving it and you still have the emotions tied to it, you still go into a fear state, you clam up, you react physically from an, a memory, something that has passed, it's happening to your body now. And your mind does not know the difference. Your body does not know the difference. It makes it real now, like on the Matrix. You mean we can die in the Matrix? I thought you said that it wasn't real. What did Morpheus say? Your mind makes it real. And that shit is true. It's very true. Get a sip. It's true. What or who are beneath? What? Anything else in this? No. Okay. Am I living to others' expectation? That likes to pop out too. Somebody is. Where you like to go? Okay. Father said let's do some gateway activation. Activate yourself. Because living those memories should call you into activation. Activate you into movement. To move you. To push you. That's what emotions are for. Pain. Pain is a catalyst. It moves you. Joy is a catalyst. It moves you. It does. It's supposed to move you. Yeah, emotions move you into some sort of direction. Yes, they galvanize and they help you. They help you to polarize yourself. They do. You can go through an experience. You know how some people can go through some of the most heartbreaking atrocities and they come out and they are uh, still, you know, kind and loving and giving. And some people... That, like, whatever they went through makes them more empathetic and more understanding, more compassionate, right? Because you, you've learned what it's like to experience that. But some people come out and they are numb. They are cold. They don't feel anything. They have shut themselves off. They don't feel nothing, right? And then some people get bitter and angry, you know? And it's really trying to figure out where you are, you know, to see, to see it. And then just come to good with it, to see it, recognize it, balance it out, balance it. What did you learn? And what did it teach you about yourself? What did you, you know, what did you learn about you? What did you learn about your own capacity? We got a card stuck in there. Fearless love is one thing. We're going to turn that up for the count, uh, uh, a part of the energy. Is it this? This one. Evolutionary downloads. Recall and power. Somebody needs to really recall their power. And Father says that it's in a challenge for you to go forward. It's challenging it in a go forward position. Right? Your ability to recall your power. Future thinking. Somebody is not thinking about the future. They're thinking about the past. They are ruminating about the past. I would take that for self-edification as well because I have a tendency to think about past events and, and wonder the what ifs. You know, are you wondering about the what ifs? If I had to chose this way, if I had to did that, what would it be? Secrets revealed, you know. That's something. Father pushed the deck here. Going inside, I just asked Father to reveal secrets to me. I did. Reveal on to me. Revelation. You know, we often go looking outside for things to, to discover. But instead of 
looking inside and the answers are often found inside inside of self what's going on with me again 2023 you know uh, I keep seeing that everywhere it's the holidays and everybody's 2023 and it's gonna be the best year and people do that every single year they do we talked about people keeping their heart open unlocking generosity is that a challenge do you want this card no okay but um, yeah people are uh, talking about the year is coming and 2023 is going to be the best year ever and look 2023 will be just like 2022 if you take your old 2022 with you say that one more again 2023 is going to be just like 2022 if you take your old 2022 with you that version of you discover the why 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 what or who am i beneath all of my roles if you could get down into the trueness of you like that authenticity that so like kingdom space you like your realness because it ain't up here no it's in here and to go in and discover yourself like the source of yourself, your light, to brighten up your lumens is a whole thing. Looking at that past, see the walk, and come to good with it. It is. And know that everything that's on that walk gave you source material. It gave you source material. It built you up. It's edifying you so that you could be strong weak. Because you called for good bread. Now whether or not you will rot like root rot. Because you are allowing the emotions to sit in your space. In your chakras. And just stay in there. With your energy systems. Your centers breaking down. You know they are clogged up. They can't churn. They can't process the data that this vessel is taking in. It causes you to shut down. And then it feels like that was the worst year ever. That's the emotion. That's something telling you that you're not processing. That's something telling you that you are looking forward into a win scenario. A win like W-H-E-N. When 2023 comes, I will be. When I get this new thing, I will be. When such and such, so and so, I will be. It's always a when. And that pushes your now. It disregards your now. Because the present is the present. That's the gift. And to recognize that and be joyous and grateful in the now for it all is a thing. It doesn't matter what it was. Yeah, that's hard as Especially when you're dealing with atrocities and violations and betrayals and lies and deceit and layoff and financial hardships and everything. I mean, divorce and illness and death and violence. And I mean, and then there's the other side too. I mean, was it, did it have any balance to it? Where's the joy and the laughter and the humor? And the lightheartedness to lighten your heart. The ability to give it up to the Father and let the Father lighten your load. To share that load with the Father. Did you do something that has caused you deep shame and regret? Are you judging you? Have you taken that deep shame and regret to the Father? Or just admit it to yourself, even no matter how you believe. Admit it to yourself and look at you and be like, yeah, that was not my best moment. And recall your power. Recall it. You left it in that situation. You felt like you gave it away 
to whatever it was that you was thinking on that day, whatever you were feeling on that day. But you are here now and you have the ability to go in self and discover why have it revealed what was it going on in me that I allowed this to happen and some things is not an allowance it's not it's some things that's just done on to you I would say 50 50 you know you experience stuff that other people do and you experience the decisions that you make I need a sip <clears throat> yeah but either way all of those situations are with you. They've happened. And you can't go back and change it. You can only recognize it for self-discovery, for learning, for growth, in order to move forward. Using that as fuel, as source material, to build back better. Go on Biden. I'm not even a big Biden fan, but I do like that slogan. Whoever wrote that for him because he didn't write it. You know Joe did not write that. Somebody else said that to him. So whoever you are, kudos to you. Build back better. All right. Heart chakra opening, unlocking generosity. Yeah. Yeah. Unlocking your, your heart, opening back up, being generous to people. You know, oftentimes people are so mean and so, you know. The opposite of generous. You want any more out of here? No. Where shall we go? Test. Test. Anything else on the table? No? That's it? Okay. Father said that's it. You know. So on this day, let's think about it. What was I intended to do in this life? Just discover that in self-discovery. Everything along your path has brought you to this now so that you can discover what it is that you were intended to do. It's all leading you towards your purpose. It is. And the purpose of it really is to learn and discover you. It is. Learn, discover you. Brighten up your light. Transmute energy. You got all this stuff that's, that came along with you and you probably have a lot of that energy still stored up in your chakras. Right? But to transmute it, is a thing to transmute it to meditate see what it is no emotion attached to it and if you feel emotional remind yourself that it's past it's gone I, I forgive me you know I feel that forgive them you know and you know and let it go you may have to still make a decision like you don't mean you let folks into your life they don't get a chance to be with you and discover you. You may have learned to put in boundaries. And, and you may have learned to uh, say no. Because everybody is not, you know, everything doesn't have to be a yes. I mean, I hear it's a hell no until it's a holy hell yes. I mean, like, because most things you're going to have to say no to. You really do. In order to love on yourself, no is a whole thing and it's a whole statement and it needs no justification. No. Yeah, that's what I said. Okay, so, and when you get to the point where you're ready to say yes, it's going to be something, yes, that's really good for you, good for your spirit. Because 90% of this ish out here just not good for us no more. It's just not. We The, the soil is polluted. The water is polluted. I mean, you still got to eat and drink, but you can choose, like, 90% of that shit ain't no good. And the 10% is that that's what you could choose, you know? Do I choose to continue to, to do this? We saw all these memes going on during Thanksgiving. Low vibrational foods. I happen to agree. I don't think that it's good for us to eat chitlins. I just don't. I wouldn't want something else to eat my intestines. I mean, as a matter of fact, I mean, it's... Why would I want to eat something that I got to clean shit out of? I'm just saying. I mean, like, real shit, like, shit, shit, like... Not just me calling it shit because it looked disgusting. No, that's real shit like fecal matter, like feces. 
why would I want to eat something? I mean, and trust me, when I was a little kid, I grew up, you know, my mom used to cook chitlins, and I'd be down there in the basement with her cleaning them stanky-ass things, throw some hot sauce on them. But, it, huh, I quit eating pork at 17. That shit had to go bye-bye. Mm-mm. Why? Because I had a revelation. Here's the thing. And do what you want. Tis the season to do you. Like, really. Because there's no judgment here. I don't judge you, and I don't want you to judge me. So just let it be each to each day on, like, seriously, okay? Look, I wrote, we was on the freeway, me and my mom one time, and we was riding. Uh, it was a lot of construction, you know, something going on. And we all ended up having to get off the freeway. You know how they shut it down, and everybody got to get off on one exit, so everything's all backed up. So just so happened, the, back, the exit, we get, and I told y'all I'm a channel master. I've been like this my whole life. Now, we on the freeway stuck, stuck next to what? A whole bunch of pigs on the way to the slaughterhouse. Sorry, Sasha. Sorry, baby. Uh... Yeah, on the way to the slaughterhouse. Now, when I tell you these pigs, it's like four trucks of pigs. We don't roll past, and we end up sitting next to one of them, like the fourth truck or something like that, third or maybe it's one, however it went. We sit next to this truck, and why not say you could smell these pigs? They smell terrible, for one. But secondly, they was quiet as shit. Quiet. When I say pin drop quiet, like wasn't no oinking, no none of that. They was quiet. And in my heart, I felt in my spirit, these pigs is scared to fucking death. Like, they know that they on their last rag. They know that when every, anytime anybody get in that damn truck, they don't come back. I felt like they knew they was on their way to their death. That they was finna be slaughtered. That, that, like, that was it. I felt like they knew it. I felt like they, I felt they stress and anxiety. Like, they, and then... Get this, we ended up having to get where we got off the freeway at. We rolled past the slaughterhouse, yo. Rolled right past the slaughterhouse and what's on the ground in front of the slaughterhouse? Dead pigs. It was like eight of them lined up on the sidewalk. Now, who the hell and why did they line them up like that? I can't tell you, but I promise you, if I did a live and brought my mama on here, she would tell you the same story, and I promise you that is the last day I ate pork. I think I might have had a pork chop and a rib bone since then, since in like, and out of all the years since I've been 17. Why? Because I felt like them pigs had had a heart attack on the way to the slaughterhouse because they were so stressed out. You couldn't tell me that them pigs wasn't stressed, that they didn't have a heart attack pulling up to that building. But they done passed out and died in the truck. And for me, it was like, you taking all that stress in your body. First of all, these are not even really good clean animals. And how they raised is in some very poor conditions. And then the stress that they are under, like we eat that stress. Like that is the last experience that they have. And then it got me going into all of that, like all the other animals. Like, what does a chicken feel when you, when it's, you know, they don't die. They don't transition peacefully. That stuff, to me, stays in the vessel, and then we eat it. I know they say you're supposed to pray over it, but does it get rid of that energy of anxiety and stress? I don't feel like it do. I don't. Energy is transform transformed. It Energy flows. It moves. Unless it get locked up and clogged up, that's why your energy centers, your chakras have to be in alignment. So you can transmute the energy. And if all of us, not all of us, because there's many, you know, people, yoganandas and yogis and people who meditate all the time and they really keep their spirit light, you know, so that you can transmute and transform the energy. The energy of what you experience on a daily. The pigs that had a whole heart attack on the way to the slaughterhouse because they knew they could feel it. You can't tell me that they couldn't feel it. I would not believe anybody tell me that they couldn't feel it. I believe that they could feel it. And I felt like I was bringing that into myself, that stress. And I feel like that's a, a compounding factor for many of us is that we eat stress. We eat stress we 
operate and live in stressful situations. We eat because of stress and what we're eating, those animals have been stressed. They live in stressful situations and they die in stressful situations and that stress is held within the food and we eat it and we take in. Not only are we taking in stress from our environment, we're taking, we're receiving it from others again, and, but we are also drinking it because the planet, the water is polluted and stress and we're eating it. Our vessel is just full and compacted with stress. So because we said that, let's stress less. Let's do something to help us release some of that stress. What could we talk about? We talked about looking at that past track for self-discovery, right? We talked about detaching from the emotions. Just seeing what happened in the past and allowing yourself to uh, observe it, to recognize it in order to uh, just be aware. Discover what it was, what it came to teach you. What did you learn from it and how can you transmute the energy and go on so that you don't stress about it, so that you can detach your emotions from it. Yes, just get the lesson, baby, and move on in short. Let's get the lesson. You want this? 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 Okay. Walk slowly. When you act calm, your body will also calm down. Maybe somebody's uh, past walk has made them like a little, you know, not antsy or jittery, but just hyped up, I feel, you know. When taking a break or moving from one place to the next, try intentionally walking extra slow. The busier, maybe you're super busy. That's what I was feeling like. you just always moving, you know what I mean. Not necessarily stress, or maybe you are moving because of the stress, yeah. It's making you stay active, like overly active. And your father is saying maybe you could use to calm down, like to slow down, to slow down, to pull yourself back, to act calm so that you can be calm. The busier or more stressed out you feel, the slower you walk. Pay attention to what you are walking on and take mental notes on how the walking feels. Pay attention to what you or you are walking on. Maybe that means like whatever situation that you're ruminating on. You know, slow yourself down. Become calm in your thoughts. We was just talking about some of this. Peacefully and focused eating helps you be more present and reduce stress. Pay attention to your eating. Paying attention to your eating helps you find the foods and portion sizes your body needs. Do we not just talk about food? and the stress that we take in while we're eating and then like that's another thing if you rush and eat like just gobble your food like before you know it is you, you know not taking the opportunity slowing down to like chew until your food is fully broken down that's the whole thing oftentimes we chew like gone you know if you chew that many times i've seen people who chew like literally two three times and swallow it that puts a lot of stress on your system because the first point of digestion is in the mouth. That is the point of having teeth, not just to rip the shit off the bone or, you know, but it's really to break it down. So to be intentional and slow down while you're eating to chew thoroughly, not it reduces stress. You can feel, you can taste you have such more, much more enjoyment of your food, getting the flavors, and then it slows you down and makes it intentional. There's a sense of gratitude and appreciation that's tied to that. And then you reduce the stress on your body. It goes down. It's not clumped all up and you got to damn near force it down. You know, that's another stress, forcing it down. When, when you chew intentionally, your food automatically works itself down. It kind of, you swallow all while you're chewing because the food is basically being broken down almost to liquid form before it goes down. 
it reduces the stress on your throat, your whole intake down into like heartburn and all that stuff. I feel like somebody might suffer from that, you know, and when it gets down into your stomach now it's really, you know, your stomach has to do less work in order to pull the nutrients out that's going to go into your small intestine and all that to do that separation and breaking down, further breaking down, where your small intestine can use it and pull out what it needs. Gut health is important. So to gut health starts with your mouth. Yes. Yes. Father's put it in reverse there, eating too fast. Not, you know, take any appreciation for that. I mean, because if you don't have a hot meal or any meal, yeah, it is like uh, a whole thing. You get, it's plenty of people that's every day trying to get a hot meal. And they will do some everything to get it, to feed themselves or feed their family. So to slow down and appreciate it when you're sitting at a table or any table, to bless all the hands that brought the food, all the hands, not only just to cook, but every hand that had a hand in putting that food in front of you. Whether you at the grocery store, somebody stocked the shelves, somebody packaged it, somebody processed it, somebody picked it, somebody did something. It was a lot of hands, and it's a lot of people to bless and be thankful for, for the fact that you could just eat a frozen burger. It slows you down. It puts your mind phrase, fat frame in a state of gratefulness. And from that state, you pull in everything. Go to the center of yourself. By returning to your center regularly, you will have a better recognition of your emotions feelings and needs. You will feel more empowered when you live for yourself, not just for others. I cannot, Father, you so good, I promise you. Like, I could cry, like, right now, because it's like, thank yourself for just being. Thank yourself for just being. Just to be. Just to be, beloved. The present is the gift. And you being consciously aware of self, of creation, of the plane, of everything around you, your connections to other people, your passion for your service, your just the enjoyment of life, again, the hurt, the pain, and anxiety, the depression, all of it, just to be able to sense it, to feel it, is a blessing. It is something to be grateful for. Because when you go back to wholeness and you just are engulfed in everything, there is no individuality. You realize that we are all one. So to experience yourself as a unique expression of the Most High God is beautiful. Thank yourself for just being. Find a way to appreciate I wouldn't care if you was eating cheese and saltine crackers, sardines and saltines, okay? I done been there. Vienna sausages and saltines with some mustard and some hot sauce, trust me. And was grateful to have something in my stomach. Are you talking about chewing slow because you want to make them six little sausages last? What? It's a thing to be grateful in that, to see the fact that I'm still cared for, that I will not perish, that I shall go on and this too shall pass. As I'm grateful for these six Vienna sausages and these couple of crackers, the ones that came out of the, uh, that we saved from maybe last month or two months ago, because you done grabbed the extra ones from the Chinese food restaurant or wherever. The little two-pack saltines. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Come on with this thing. But when you could see just that little bit, you could see everything in that little bit. Come on, the children of Israel was thankful for that manna when the Lord put it. To, for them to make bread, it seemed like a little bit of nothing. But it gave them everything that they needed to persevere, to go on. Water from a rock? That looked like the smallest, most insignificant thing you could think of, like water from a rock. It wasn't like it was no flowing waterfalls, springs, or nothing. It's water from a rock. And they was grateful, thankful, appreciation. 
most of the time we are most appreciative when we have little or nothing. I've been watching all these videos on YouTube about people just giving gratefulness. Just giving. I could, you know, look like, uh, oh my God, I lost my wallet and I don't have no food. I'm starving. I'm hungry. Do you have a dollar? And all these rich people, people who got bread will walk right past you. Don't, how many times have you seen people crying and nobody stopped to ask them if they okay? Walk right past them like you don't see them. But people who are invisible to the other folks, you go up to them and ask them. They will give you their last change, last dollar, and they don't have nothing. And they will share the nothing that they have just because they know how it feels to have nothing, to be hungry, compassion. A lot of these lessons come to give you compassion, to give you understanding, to give you an awareness, to show you you. Slow down. Eat slowly. Savor the moment, every moment. Don't rush to gobble it down. Savor it. Don't walk past the blessings of life. Recognize them. These eight wonders give you the ability to recognize five senses, emotions is six, intuition is seven, the grand cosmic mind that we're all connected in this life, in this manifestation, in creation itself. That's eight. The other seven help us realize number eight. And if you think I'm lying, go look how, up how your eyes work. How does hearing work? How do we develop language? How does your taste work and your smell? Google search it. And you will see that we are all connected. We make this reality up. So 2023, what to know? First of all, we know that the earth is billions of years old. So 2023 is a fallacy. When is a fallacy? It's always just now, beloved, now. Wait, no, 2023 some made up shit to do some shit you thinking about now? Do it now. That's right, father. Stress less cards, empowering questions, sleep tight cards. Maybe I should buy some sleep tight cards. That'll be cute. But the one, thank yourself and thank you, thank yourself for your skills. Thank yourself for what you can do. We just talked about using these eight wonders. That's a whole skill to recognize that they're there for your use. Use to experience creation itself to experience the plane, to experience yourself, to learn you, to know you, to grow you, so that you can ascend. I say that so that heaven can do the work. I mean, we here to do the work of heaven. And learning how to do that is a whole thing. I mean, we are in a place that we remember not where we come from, we came back in as babes. Again, that baby done been here before. But that baby that's been here before has a knowingness and then it gets taught all of these conformities. I mean, because they have their attitude and their personalities and all of that stuff. But then things start to teach and tell them who they are. Oh, the world tells you that you are that I'm a black woman. I mean, I can see my skin, but there was no definition put on that when I popped out. The world said that. How many things have you taken on that the world has said that you are? Because my spirit, like, huh, it, my spirit don't need no vessel. So, no, that's not who I am at my core. My trueness is not that. It's not the vessel that I've taken on. It is not the conformities of the world. It's not everything that I've been through. So, what or who am I beneath all of my roles? I am a piece of heaven. I am a pixel of the Most High God coming to this plane in this vessel to do a work. And a part of that work is to discover myself, to grow myself, to grow my lumens, to brighten my light, to change my frequency. To change my frequency so that my frequency can match that of the Most High God. So that I can 
just do more, be more, experience more. Thank yourself for your skills. Gratitude creates positive reactions in your body. Gratitude creates positive reactions in your body. And it helps you be more present. And being more present diminishes the feelings of stress. Be present. Break a routine is there. Maybe you have a routine of uh, disregarding you. Maybe you have a routine of looking back over your past with, you know, that resentment, that anger. That's still in here. You need to bust that up. You know, let it break and fall away from you. You know. Go to the center of yourself. By returning to your center regularly, you will have a better recognition of your own emotions, feelings, and your needs. Yesterday's session, we talked about self-care, but not self-care in terms of, oh, I'm going to take a spiritual bath and light some candles. I'm going to unplug for today. I'm going to drink more water. No. We're talking about self-care in terms of shadow work. That resentment that you have over past situations requires care. That resentment requires release. To care for yourself by releasing resentment. To care for yourself by putting faith on top of your fears. To care for yourself by digging into your desires more than you believe on your doubts. Yes, there is a way for you to care for your shadow side. To bring that shadow into your present and make it whole. Because there's usefulness there. You've learned something from those things. Releasing those emotions. Let your body know that it is gone. It's just a lesson. I mean, we learned it. And that is the point. To learn. You don't want to keep repeating the lesson. Because you didn't learn it. And if you keep feeling it, that means you'll keep living it. And you will keep living it. To let it go. Let it flow, because everything is going to work all out all right, you know? So let go, let it flow, let it flow, let it go. Just know that you are okay, like now. Not when, not 2023, not on Friday, not when you get the next job. Not when you get your next boo. Not when y'all get married. Not when you get the house. Not when this new car come. Not when you get this new... No, now, now, now. Everything is now. Feel it now. Know it now. Because everything that you feel in now that's from back then will keep happening to you now. You will keep calling it back. Because that's what you're resonating with. Everything is a frequency, beloved. It's frequency. Hmm. Change your frequency. Slow down. Taste the beauty of life. Taste it. Savor it. It only is like this. Only lasts for a second. Savor it. I told y'all it comes together. It's like a whole box of chocolates. You just never know what you're going to get. You just never know. You just never know. But know this. Know this, beloveds. Know that I love you. I love you. I love you. Ooh, I love you. I love you just like I love me. Why? Because I made the source that made the I do. That made all of creation. I mean, by its infinite intelligence, what? The breath of life, the force that binds and connects all things. Ooh, ooh, I love that. And I love you because you are made from that. You are called. Called to be good bread. Let it go. Let it go. Everything worked out all right. You're here. Now, go forward, now, let it go, 
now. Start now. And to the next now, we will call this one Ashe. Mm.